Hello, and welcome to case study number 21 with Super Data Science. Today we're going to be looking at some data from the insurance industry and see if we can use a random forest model to predict claims. So let's load our packages and our data and see what we're dealing with. So here we can see we've got a unique ID for each of the claimants, their gender, their BMI, an age bracket, whether they've previously claimed or not, and then whether there's a claim. So first of all, we need to check the structure of our data and make all of our factor variables into factors. So question one, make all variables factors. So first of all, we'll look at the structure of our data set. Now, as we can see, we've actually got all of our fact, all of our variables are factor variables apart from previous claim. So we need to make sure that previous claim is a factor. So we set data variable previous claim equal to as dot factor data previous claim. Let's run that. Now if we check the structure of our data set again, we can see that previous claim is now a factor variable. So let's move on to question two. What we want to do now is see what portion of people claimed. So that's simply going to be data. And then we're going to use a little shortcut here, control shift and M and that will put in our piping for our, from our dplyr function and then we'll group by claim and again we'll use that shortcut cut, control shift m and then we want to summarize and we want the number equals n so if we run that we can see that 739 people didn't claim and 261 did make a claim so now we're going to move on and start building our machine learning algorithms. So we need to split our data into a training and testing set. And we can do this in exactly the same way as we normally do. So we'll start by setting our seed. And it doesn't matter what number you choose for your seed, just as long as it's the same every time. And we'll use the sample.split function. And we want to split on claim. And our split ratio we'll use a 0.8, so we have 80% of our data in our training data set and 20% in our testing. So now it's training data equals data split. And then our testing data set. equals data not split. So if we run those two, we can see over here that we have our testing data set with 200 observations and our training data set with 800 observations, which is exactly what we want. So let's move on to question four. We're going to build our random forest. Now our classifier, which is our, the name of our model, is equal to random forest. And we're going to be predicting claim. And our predictor variables are going to be all of our other variables in our data set. So BMI, gender, age bracket, and previous claim. And our data set is going to be our training data set. And we'll just set the number of trees to be 100. If we use a large number of trees, it will reduce the variance in our model, but it makes it much more computationally intensive. So we're just going to use 100 trees for this example. So now we've got our classifier built. We're going to predict the results for the training data set. So our training prediction 
is equal to the predict function and the model we're using is classifier and then our new data is our training data so we run that and now question six we want to see how accurate our model is so what we're going to do is calculate our confusion matrix and that's simply using the table function and comparing the predictions to our actuals which is training data claim So let's run that code, and now we've got our confusion matrix. And if we have a look at that, we can see that we've got 37 correct answers when the person did claim, and 582 when they didn't claim. So now we want to calculate what proportion of correct answers we have, so we need to sum the diagonal and divide by the total number of observations. So question seven. We do the sum of the diagonal of our confusion matrix and we're going to divide that by the sum of the whole confusion matrix. So there we can see we got 77% correct, which is pretty good for this model. So now we're going to move on and see what our accuracy is for our training data set. So we need to start by predicting for our testing data set and we're going to do this in exactly the same way as we did for our training data set prediction. So we can just simply copy that line of code and wherever we see training, we're going to change that to testing. So our new data set is testing data and we're going to call this testing predict. So if we run that, now we want to Again, create our confusion matrix, but this time for the testing data set. So again, we can simply copy our line of code from question six, paste that, and then change wherever we see training, we're going to change that to testing. So this is going to be our testing confusion, and we want to use our testing predictions, and then we'll use our testing claim. So we run that. Now we want to calculate what portion we got correct. So we can just copy again for question 10. We're going to copy question 7. And we can see that our accuracy is 74%. So it's not gone down much for the testing set, which means our model is pretty good and it's not a bad accuracy for this model. I hope you've all really enjoyed this case study and I look forward to seeing you next time.